What up, Net fans? Nets Boy here, bringing your latest in your Brooklyn Nets news. So, that was a little bit of a disaster. What am I referring to? The Brooklyn Nets West Coast trip. Uh, it's November 17th, and the Nets just coming off of a really disastrous uh, road trip, West Coast trip. Um, I mean... Uh, We'll go game by game and, and try to figure out what exactly went wrong for the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, let's start off with the Phoenix game. Joe Johnson... Hold, hold on a second. But, that's dog, what are you doing? Stop. Stop. I'm doing the video. Stupid Nets dog. Um... Anyway, uh, Joe Johnson, before the game, you know, he had some very interesting quotes, or quote, in which we all know he said something along the lines of that the Nets are playing very selfishly, and that, you know, people only pass at, like, last resort, and they're never going to be able to win a game against the good teams. Which is true. You need to play real team basketball to beat the better teams. Uh, but the thing that was really interesting is, um... Of all the people to say that, Joe Johnson's one of the last guys I, you, I think should be saying something like that. I, I don't know. Uh, but either way, he made that statement, and they came out, and it was they were really good and really efficient in the first half against Phoenix. I, I was super excited. I said, this is what we're expecting. And then all of a sudden, in the second half, it's like Joe, what Joe Johnson said came true, except the person who was not passing the ball was Joe Johnson. And it, that all of a sudden they just became very stale, no ball movement, tons of isolation. Next thing I know, Joe Johnson has the ball in his hands, and he's shooting every possession Kobe style and missing every shot. It was terrible. The reason why the Nets lost was that they blew a 19-point lead in the second half because they weren't having any ball movement most of the time because Joe Johnson was shooting and missing everything. So everything that Joe Johnson just said the Nets were doing, he was doing himself. If you're going to make a statement, you should back it up by your play. So that was ridiculous. And look, I love it when Joe Johnson takes over down the stretch of games when he's making them. But when he's not making them, you've got to find other ways. And that has always been one of the problems the Nets have always had. It's always been that they always try to do the same exact thing because it worked once. Newsflash, just because it worked once doesn't mean it's going to work every time. You've got to adapt and to the situation up in hand. Some days Joe Johnson can carry a team offensively down the stretch. He couldn't against the Suns. He had to find something else, but they didn't. The Nets didn't look for anything else. Joe Johnson just kept on shooting and missing. Next thing you know, the Nets lost. And that's a bad loss. Because I, I said going into these three games that they were going to go one and one and two because I felt like the Fe I felt they should have been able to beat Phoenix and let's be honest they should have been able to beat Phoenix they were up by 19 but then Joe Johnson became himself or I don't even know that's oh it was a disaster complete disaster that was probably one of the worst losses of the year at least you know the other two losses I mean the Timberwolves loss was pretty bad too because they should have won that game but you know. Then, yeah, you know, you, the Celtics lost. They just got blown out the whole game. But they were up by 19. Jeez. So then they played the Golden State Warriors on a back-to-back. -back. I had no expectations of them winning that game at all. We all know as Nets fans, or if you are a Nets fan watching this, the Brooklyn Nets have never played well on back-to-backs. They just don't. Um, but they put up a pretty decent fight against the Warriors, who uh, actually lost two straight games going into that. Um, they put up a good fight. Jared Jack, I think, was 10 for 10 from the field, but no one else could do anything. And they couldn't make a three. I think they were like three for 19 or something from three-point land. That really hurt them, and, you know, they lost by eight. But they, they did hang around. You know, they cut it as close as five down to, like, the last, like, three minutes, but just not enough in the tank to pass them. And there's not much you can say about that. The Warriors are a very dangerous team um, when it comes to... Let's talk! Stop! Alright, you want, you want to say something? Is that what you're saying? 
You'll have your moment for a second, all right? I'll call, bring you in in about a, about a minute. I'll bring you in, all right, next dog? Sorry. Um, so he's... Uh, what was I saying? So, yeah, I mean, that's a dangerous team. You, you know, Clay Thompson is definitely somebody you got to watch out. And, you know, and Stephen Curry. And, you know, that team's going to be good. Uh, I don't trust them, you know, being a, da- a super dangerous championship team because they make a lot – do have a lot of turnovers. But they're good – I mean, they're a good team, the Warriors. And that loss didn't surprise me one bit. You know, um, I was actually impressed at how close it actually was. But that leads me now into the Portland game, in which they were without, Portland Trailblazers were without LaMarcus Aldridge and Nicholas Batoon. Yet, they still managed to screw that up. Um, And once, the story for that one, they were, I think, 1 for 14 from three-point land. Look, the Nets going into this West Coast swing was, I think, second in the league in three shooting percentage or something like that. And they have completely, in this West Coast, completely couldn't make a three. And, look, when you're a team that relies on the three-point shot, and I'm not saying the Nets rely on the three-point shot. Let's be honest. Most of their success is isolation post-ups with Lopez and Joe Johnson, and then when a double team comes, you make the extra pass ball movement and shoot a three. That's kind of how, you know, the blueprints of the Nets' offense so if you're not making threes, you're not going to win. And that is a one of the bigger reasons, big reason why the Nets lost um, against Golden State and Portland. What is it, Nets dog? Oh, oh, that's what you want to say? Oh, Nets dog's going to say something. Come here. Oh, God, you... You gotta lose some weight. What up, Net fans? Net Dog's back and better than ever. Hey, Net Net Boy knows what he's talking about about them not being able to make some threes. But I'll tell you what the real crime is: Brooke Lopez and his inability to grab a damn rebound. I mean, I'm like maybe three feet tall on on two legs, and I could probably get more rebounds than him. Ah! Ah! I'm falling. Ah! Here I am. Like, what the hell is that about? Brooke Lopez, you're seven feet tall! You had, I think, only five rebounds against Phoenix, five against Golden State, and four against Portland. Your twin brother, twin brother, had seven! If he got seven, why can't you get anything? You are pathetic when it comes to getting rebounds! I'm a better rebounder! Watch, I'm gonna box out! That's who I am! Box them out! Box them out! I got the rebound! Ah! <sighs> Diet time. You gotta lose some weight. <laughs> but, yeah! What, like... <laughs> Brooke Lopez, that's another thing. The Nets can't get rebounds! And Brooke Lopez is a huge culprit of that! The guy is seven feet tall, and he can't get a damn rebound! That drives me crazy. I'm five foot three, all right? And in one game that I, when I used to play basketball, I once got 11 rebounds in a game. I'm five foot three. Now, I was also a lot skinnier and more athletic at that time and did not have three knee surgeries, which I am where I am now. But I was able to do it. He's seven feet tall. He's a professional basketball player. And he can't get more than, like, five rebounds. He did have nine against the Knicks. But, like, he's averaging, I think, 5.4 rebounds a game. For a seven-foot-tall player who's playing about 30 minutes a game, 31 minutes, he should have at least eight rebounds or seven. I'll give him seven rebounds. It's inexcusable, and it's a big reason why they're struggling on the boards. The Nets, I think, are second worst in the league in rebounding. Because Kevin Garnett and Mason Plumlee are the only two real rebounders. But Brooke Lopez, big dude, seven feet tall, can't get a damn rebound. And what confuses me more than anything else is this guy averaged 8.1 rebounds his rookie year, 8.6 rebounds his second year in the league. So it's not, you can't tell me he can't get rebounds. He did it his first two years in the league. 
But now he and it's it's the same thing. He he gets positioning. The ball will hit his hand, and then whoever he's boxing out pokes it right out of his hand every time. But watch it. Lopez pro always gets his hand on the damn ball, but can never hold on to it. And somebody either knocks it out of it, his hand or knocks it away. It's ridiculous. I don't know what happened to his hands. I mean, look, look he's never going to be a great rebounder. And there's a couple reasons why. He's slow. You all right there, Nets dog? He's all angry. He's, he's, he's nodding and agreeing and making sneezing noises and, and, and disgust. Um, you know, he's, he's big and slow. So he's not, he doesn't have lateral quickness. So if he missed times a, a jump or if he doesn't, you know, move in the right position to get a rebound, he, he's not going to be able to, you know, to have the athleticism to make up in the air and get the rebound. So he has to time his jumps perfectly. Also... Because he's not that athletic, he doesn't have a quick second jump. A great rebounders have a second, a quick second jump. You know, a quick double jump. You jump once, you jump up again right after you do it. Lopez can't do that. So, for him to be able to get rebounds, he really has to time it well. But it doesn't matter. When you're seven feet tall, and you put your arms in the air, you should be able to get more rebounds than anyone else. You really should. It To me, it's inexcusable. It's... And everybody knows that I am a huge Brook Lopez fan. You know, it's it, I wear his jersey. You know, he's my current favorite net. You know, I, I, and I, I, I always defend him. I know if you remember, if you remember, if you're any of my viewers from last year, if you remember my top five players in each position, I had Brook Lopez as the number two center. I can't even like that argument if the guy can't get more than five rebounds a game. You know, my argument was based off the fact that he's a guy I knew was capable of at least seven rebounds a game and eight rebounds a game. But he's not even doing that now. Uh, the only thing I would say to him and tip my hat to is he acknowledges he needs to get better at it. But the thing that drives me crazy is he should already be good at it. Now, maybe it's rust. You know, maybe it's because of the fact that he hasn't played in a long time, that he has to remember how to, you know, be that type of player. You know, and, and every year... He's gotten more and more away from rebounding. After his second year in the league, you know, because then Chris Humphreys came onto the team and the year, and then Chris, when Chris Humphreys came onto the team, he got every rebound. And Lopez even admitted, oh, I'm not even good, uh, you know, I'm not used to getting the rebound because Humphreys would get it and I just would run the floor. You know, then they got Reggie Evans. He did the same exact thing. But now those guys aren't there anymore, Brooke. You've got to get rebounds. Your team needs you to get rebounds. Lionel Hollins is pulling you from games because you can't get rebounds. And it's it's frustrating because he's he really, if Brook Lopez could get like average like eight rebounds a game and and like two blocks a game, he's one of the best centers in the game then. But you can't make that argument if the guy can't get rebounds. So Brook, listen to me, listen to the Nets dog. Work on the rebounding and 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 I don't know. Figure out what exactly it is that you're not doing that you did your first two years in the league when you averaged 8.1 and then 8.6 rebounds. You know? I mean, I do think a lot of it has to do is he's slower now. He's slower. That could be a combination of the fact that he bulked up more with muscles, but also maybe because of the fact that, you know, he hasn't played in over a year. You know, he's still getting back into it. I sure hope so because it, it's a problem. And it's going to be a continuous problem with the Nets. Um, one suggestion I would have is Jermaine O'Neal and Emeka Okafor are both still free agents and are not on any respective teams in the NBA. If you're a team like the Nets that's really struggling at rebounding, why not look at one of those two guys? Especially Emeka Okafor, who is a legitimate, like, really good rebounder. He could really help your team. Same thing with uh, Jermaine O'Neal. And both those guys don't need to play every t every game. But when a, the problem right now with the Nets is when one of their bigs get in foul trouble, whether it's Lopez, Lopez uh, Plumlee, or Garnett, their front court depth is a little shallow. You know, he's doing, you know, Alan Hans is doing things like Toledovich at, at the center going small. Or my favorite, Drone Jordan playing. And, you know, he's played well. I will say this. He's played well since he's played, but I don't trust that guy out on the court too often. I don't know. Just food for thought there. If Lopez can't improve getting rebounds, if I'm, you know, Billy King, 
I mean, you are going to have to find a roster spot for him, so you are going to have to probably, uh, you know, cut a player. Um, but I think someone like Omega Okafor would be a huge pickup. He's a free agent. Sign him to a, you know, a, a veteran's minimum contract. Maybe, maybe cut some player or, you know, make a trade. I would trade Andre Kirilenko. He's not even in the rotation right now. I would trade him for a draft pick, straight up. He's got an expiring contract. Find a team that wants his con his his uh contract. Maybe a team that could really use him, like like a. Uh, I'm trying to think of a team, uh, you know, and maybe trade him for straight up for a second, a late first round draft pick. I do it. I call up a team and say like, hey, I got Andre Kirilenko. Maybe a team like. Maybe a team, a team like the Warriors, or or, or the or a team like uh, who else is a good team in the middle middle of the pack, type team. Uh, you know, a team like the the Mavericks, or the team, a team like the the Spurs. The Spurs would love them. You know, you know what I mean. A team that you know could could improve their depth in, in the forward spot and just be like draft pick for them. And then assign a Mecca Okafor. Sign Mecca Okafor to a Veterans minimum. That's what I would do, Billy King. Because right now the Nets can't get rebounds. The three shooting, they'll come back. They got too many weapons offensively. Their three shooting is not an issue. They'll get back to that. But uh, they got to improve rebounding. Um, I I did have a song, by the way, about Brook Lopez and his inability to get rebounds. However, I broke a guitar string in a freak playing the guitar accident literally this afternoon um and so or last afternoon um so i I actually can't play the song for you but i will you know me uh i love playing my uh my good old songs you know and uh i wrote a song about brooke lopez's inability to get rebounds so uh before next nets boy it's that song for everybody uh so keep your eyes open for that that'll be fun uh I'm excited. Uh, I don't want to say I'm excited about that, but still, it, it's, that's, look for that. Um, sometime between now and next Nets Boy episode, I'll post that here, right on this channel, Nets Boys, uh, you know, uh, YouTube channel. I'll post that video of me performing the song, just for you guys, because you guys are all so special, and you guys all clearly love my mediocrity when it comes to singing and playing the guitar, because my three previous songs have had the most views of any. Of my other videos so we'll keep that going anyway let's wrap up this disastrous video or this, this video about the disastrousness of the nets disastrousness of the nets making up words now um the next three games for the nets they got the miami heat look that's a game they can win the heat are a dangerous team but i think they can beat the heat they're at home the Heat don't rebound the ball well either. I think they can beat, beat, beat the Heat. Um, so I'm going to say that's a win. Then they play Milwaukee. They got to beat Milwaukee. Jason Kidd's return to Brooklyn. That's going to be great. Um, I hope he spills soda. Uh, that's a win. Then they play... three like I thought they would but if they win the next three out of four like I really feel they can they'll be right back on track of being one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference so that's what I'm hoping for I'm predicting a three and one record the next four games the heat excuse me the heat game is going to be a close one that's going to be a tough one because the heat are a dangerous team but I think the Nets can win that one so uh, we'll see what happens so that will be in this video, like I said, uh, keep your eyes open for my song about Brooke Lopez's inability to get rebounds. That should be posted probably sometime halfway through the week, maybe around Wednesday. Uh, you know, I think it'll probably I'll probably have time to, sh to record the video and post it up by Wednesday, um, just for some fun. You know, to have some fun. So, uh, but until then, this is Nets Boy and Nets Dog, who's asleep now saying the Nets gotta do better
I gotta shape up. And this is and um yeah. This next boy. Signing off.